Hello, welcome to the show. Later on, we're going to be bringing you some new technology that's going to make you, the rider, redundant. But first, we're busy catching up on a whole lot of bikes we somehow have missed throughout the year. And Matt has found a good one. It's true. Somehow, we've managed to never have this model on the bike show before. And yet, it's really one of the most popular big cruisers in South Africa. Actually, it's more than just a simple cruiser. This is really a muscle bike, Japanese style. You may know it as the Boulevard, which is what it used to be called, but now it's known as the Intruder. Yeah, I know. I'm not sure about the name either. Intruder, it's like a housebreaker, a burglar, a criminal. Or it's a... Uh, how shall I put this? It's a... Uh, it's an adult toy. Not a good name, unless you happen to know that Intruder is also the name of an attack warplane that used to feature on American aircraft carriers. Now, that's a lot more cool. This is the limited BZ edition of the VZR1800 which is also known as the M1800R. The V-twin at the heart of this beast is very nearly 1.8 litres, and it's the most powerful cruiser Suzuki has ever made. Quite how powerful, though, remains a mystery, because Suzuki doesn't publish any figures. It is a big bike that weighs in at nearly 350 kilos, but it's long and low, so the seat height is suitably short. There's a meaty set of upside-down forks with some proper radial brake calipers and big discs. This is one cruiser that can stop like a sport bike. There's a cast alley swing arm too, and a rear shock and progressive linkage that actually works meaning this is one cruiser that isn't intent on compressing your spine at every opportunity. Completing the muscle bike looks is the 240 section rear tyre and instruments that are split between the front cowl and petrol tank. The thing with a muscle bike is that for 99% of the time, it just needs to be a good old cruiser. And that means it needs to be able to make comfortable, relaxed progress. And for that, you need a big, talky V-twin and supple suspension, which is kind of handy because the intruder has got that totally covered. No surprise, really, with a massive, nearly two-litre V-twin, there's plenty of torque to spare. In fact, there's more than enough to spare for a very useful burst of acceleration if you just twist. Big twins, in cruisers at least, are all about the torque. And the intruder has loads of the stuff, but with a surprising and somewhat out of character rush of power over the last 1500 RPM or so. Very strange and not really relevant for a cruiser. At relaxed cruising speeds, the suspension is, well, it's fantastic. It makes the road feel like it's made out of thick shag pile carpet. You couldn't ask for more. Obviously, with dimensions like these, it's not exactly a track day bike. But if you plan ahead and try and keep everything as smooth as humanly possible, corners can be enjoyed up to a point. It's when you start getting a bit carried away that you notice some limitations. I mean, if you're chasing your mate on his sport bike, for instance, and you're starting to get a hustle on, you can feel that it's 1.7 metres long, which is a bit kind of aircraft carrier-ish, and it's got a massive rear tyre, 240, remember, so you don't really want to turn. Starts to wallow a bit, which is entertaining, but a bit scary. 
<laughs> so yeah, when you're pushing it, you probably shouldn't. Just let your mate on his superbike go. You could hang on, but you're going to need nerves of steel and biceps of Schwarzenegger. I said earlier on that the intruder, or the boulevard as it was known, was a very popular cruiser in South Africa, and I think it's about time I proved that to you and got myself some feedback on why people seem to love this bike so much. We call we called um, um, M109, our um, Boulevard SA, and we're a group of um, guys from different clubs across, you know, across Gauteng and Pretoria. Um, and the main purpose of this aim was just to gather, you know, people that ride the same bikes. I mean, we've got so much love for the Boulevard, and we just got people that ride the same bike, and we're just doing fun rides. I mean, Matt, you can have a look at yourself. I mean, uh, look at what you can do to the bike, actually. Um, the look of it is, is everything. You walk into or you ride into a bike uh, event with a Boulevard, everybody looks at you, you know. And the nice thing about it, they can actually hear you before they see you. So <laughs> the sound effect is a cherry on top. Yeah, what, um, you know, what we've le le actually been uh, realizing lately that we've had so many in incidents and, you know, and unfortunately some of them have, you know, resulted to casualties. So we just want to do a bike safety awakening just to, you know, get the guys, you know, to be on, on, on par with, with road safety guidelines. It's experience more than anything. Um, it's, it's a big bike. It's got power. Um, you know, you can throw clap a mountain. You don't have to, you know, go back to lower gears. You just ask for more power and it gives you more power. Well, basically, um, it's a, it's a, well, it's not a standard M109, I suppose. We, we're a fairing. This one came from outside the country. It's one of the few in the country with a fairing. Um, and uh, this is one, one part of the bike that makes it exceptionally unique. Uh, I did a few customizations on it as well. I put a cup holder, as you can see, um, not for a beer, given that this is a safety ride, but for a nice bottle of water or whatever else you prefer. And uh, customized pipes uh, and everything else on it. Um, I actually had this installed quite recently as well. Um, so I did quite a few things. Incidentally, this bike actually won uh, best customized uh, uh, cruiser last week in Bethlehem. So I'm quite, quite proud of it, actually. Well, as you can see, I was going to call it the Boulevard, but it's the VZR 1800. It has developed, a, it's, it's like the Hayabusa. Suzuki are good with these bikes. It's a bit of a cold thing. I know. Well, I mean, they're selling, what, four or five a month of these things? Yeah, but and consistently. it's been around for a decade and it's basically not changed. <laughs> so, yeah, it's one, it's, it's one of those bikes that's uh, developed a following. Um, I won't be one of them. <laughs> really? No. It's not my sort of bike. Look, I can really appreciate it. Look, you can't be shy. I tell you what, you can't be a shy person and ride it one It does of get quite a lot of attention, doesn't Holy it? Holy moly, I could ride two Ducati Desmosedicis welded together. <laughs> <laughs> and you would not generate the sort of reaction. It doesn't matter if it's at the garage, outside the shops, some, the robots. People buy... Oh, mate, that's amazing. <laughs> It's a monster. It's a huge bike. It is deeply, deeply imposing. It's a Japanese muscle bike. It's just... It's not a sumo. It doesn't, it doesn't have very big muscles. Let's, OK, let's break it down a bit. What, what do you like about it? What are the good features? Looks amazing. Looks absolutely amazing. Does it... Do, I mean, a lot of these cruisers, they go very nicely, but they don't stop. Uh, this has an en enormously capable front end that you saw. It's got the upside-down forks, radial calipers. It's even got a suspension at the rear that doesn't incorporate your spine as part of its wow. inner workings. Hey, that's interesting. So um, that was very interesting. The handling is limiting. Obviously, you've got a massive fat tyre on the rear, so it does understeer a bit, but, a bit, but it's, it's pretty quick. Look, the, the other disappointing thing is the engine. It goes off the bottom end, and you think, wow, 1800 twin, yeah. And then it sort of dies a bit. And then over the last 1,500 RPM again, which no one will ever visit, it wakes up and is quite entertaining. So 
The engine's almost there. I noticed the, the, the clocks are a bit funny. Wrong way around. So tank mounted, so you would sat like this, aren't you? You want to look at the speed. They've got some little clocks, which has got a digital dash on the handlebar. I mean, who wants to know the, the revs on, a, on an 1800 twin? I mean, they're irrelevant. And then the speedo is down here, so you've got to check your speed like that. <laughs> <laughs> Got some safety concerns there. <laughs> and the speedo itself looks like it's been printed by a 1980s dot matrix printer thing. It's just gash and cheap and horrible. Having said that, the bike is good value at 192 grand. That's a special edition version. So all blacked out, Apart which is great. From... Yes. Yeah. The indicators. Why would you do that? I don't know. Someone Obviously, they went to the supplier and said, hello, we'd like them black, please. Oh, sorry, we don't. I only got them in the, yeah. in the shiny bling. <laughs> So, yeah, it's, I can understand why people get um, sort of into the whole vibe of the thing. You do feel cool on it. But really Suzuki's do. good at that. I mean, as we said, previously it was a Boulevard, the Hayabusa. I mean, they make them for decades. They yeah. still sell. People mm. still that, buy that them. That recipe is so right that it doesn't go out of fashion. And, it, and it, to be fair, there's not much else on the market you could get to do that sort of, unless it's any one of a number of Harleys or Indians. This is a lot cheaper. And to be fair, it's a lot better looking, you know, in a sort of slightly more modern, mean and yes. way. If you go up close to it and you tap on some of those bits and pieces... Don't do that. Yeah. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't do, do that. that. Don't do that, really. <laughs> don't do that. Can we, talk, is, can we yes. talk about the name as well, please? Yes, it's not a boulevard anymore. It's... Go on. It's an intruder. So it's a thief? Yeah. It's a petty should criminal. Have it, we should have called it the <laughs> Suzuki pickpocket. <laughs> <laughs> What is it with Intruder? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah we, well, we could go yeah, somewhere else, but we won't with that. OK, now, let's get the Iron Horse spec box up. Now, you know, I, I reckon you'd, I'm going to slag it off now, aren't I? It's, for what it's supposed to do, mm. it's a 9 out of 10. As it a cruiser? It looks great. As a cruiser, fat wheels, top looks, brilliant motor that's 8.5, 9 out of 10. If it just fill in the mid-range a bit, which I'm sure if you put a, a decent exhaust on it, it might do. It's probably a bit strangled in the middle, that's all. And 190 grand? Not bad. Top bargain, isn't it, really? I was going to say, have you ever seen a standard boulevard? No. Exactly. Have you ever seen a standard Harley? It's all part of the fun, isn't it? 